Hey guys, it's Devil. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be covering Anubis, the god of the dead today. Now, just looking at his basic stats, he looks crappy. I mean, it looks like he has no magic protect- or he, he- it doesn't look like he has. He has no magic power at the start. He has fucking physical power for some reason. I don't know why. He's got decent HP 5, he's got decent MP 5. It doesn't really go up that fast as he levels. He's got a slow attack for speed because he's a slow- attacking character because he's long range he's he's a ranged character and it's just like it looks depressing but don't be fooled this guy is fucking awesome once you get him going now he doesn't really pick up until around level three you're not gonna really be able to get ganks with him because let's just face it that you're not gonna put on enough damage I do in this game actually so it's kind of weird I kind of contradict myself as I'm playing but this guy he's on par with other casters at the start. I mean, compare him with Raw, it's almost the same. He has a little bit more mana and a little bit less health, but you know, whatever, that doesn't really matter. Leveling. First one's gonna go in Grasp, then Locust, then Mummify, and then Grasp, and then your Death Gaze. And then you're gonna proceed to level up your Grasp, and then your Locust, and then you're finally your Mummify with always putting points in the Death Gaze as much as possible. Now, ability strategy with this guy. When you're gonna just rotate your abilities into combos, you're always gonna be throwing down grasp, and then um, you have two basically two combos you can do. You can either mummify, then put down a grasp, and then ultimate on somebody, or you know, instead of ultimate, you can locust swarm. And then your other combo would be to use your grasp to slow the enemy and then shoot the mummify out because the guy's moving slower then ultimate and then you'll probably get a locust swarm in there too and by that time your your uh, grasp will be back up and if anybody survives through that I mean you either did it wrong or they're really good because this guy uh, if you you get somebody caught in your webs they're fucked but you there's a couple things you gotta be aware of when you locust swarm you're immobile for three seconds and People that know how to play Anubis know this. So, you know, A.O. Khan or whatever that guy's name is, the, the dragon, he's going to see you immobilize. He's going to hit you with his ultimate or other people will hit you with their ultimate because they know that you're not going to be moving. So use that ability carefully. Other things you can do. Um, in emergency situations, don't be afraid to use your ultimate just to stay alive or maybe score a kill. It's an instant ultimate that shoots out. It... It's a streaming damage, but it does a ton of damage. It's not that hard to aim. You can kill people with it. You see me shoot down and burn Hades into the ground several times, even through his ultimate. This guy is a glass cannon. He can truck people, and he can truck almost anybody into the dirt. So just be aware of that. Now, let's talk about lane strategy. Anubis is a very good character for running the solo lane, but if you have somebody better, let him do it. Do not like force yourself upon the center lane. It's so it's frustrating when I go into a solo match and my teammates are like, I like playing solo and I'm gonna do it my way. And it's like, what the fuck? Like play as a team. If you have, if there's like an Aokan or whatever that blue dragon's name is, I can't remember. If he's running mid, let him run mid. He's better than Anubis because Anubis is great when you have a supporting teammate. When you're choosing characters, you wanna run with a guy that has stuns. You wanna run with a Ymir because he will, he will Box people into corners for you, stun the shit out of them, slow the shit out of them, and you will just truck people into the dirt. If you have a player with a stun that's running with you, you will be almost unstoppable. It doesn't matter who you're coming up against. If you have an, a, a Ymir that can help you out a lot, that, he's like the best character I can think of. If you have one Ymir running around with you, you are going to fuck bitches up. Like, <laughs> I even said that funny. Uh... Other than that, he's really good against other casters because of his high magic starting protection. He, If you're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, go against a caster in the beginning uh, if you have the opportunity. That's just like, you don't have to. It's not that big a deal, but, you know, just so you guys know. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention about your abilities, Grasp. Once you have Grasp to level 5, it can pretty much kill. Or once you have Grasp to level 5 and you have uh, certain magic gear that gives you a lot of magic power you can drop grasp through the walls into the jungle pits and kill those mobs and get those buffs without even looking if you didn't know you can shoot abilities through walls so if as you're running down the lane you can throw a, ma a grasp into the the health pit and get that health buff without even having to go in there he hits that hard so keep that that's a really pro tip 
uh, for you guys. Just shoot it through the walls and pick up buffs as you're running. And, you know, you're running up on an enemy and then you just get the health buff. They're going to be like, what the fuck? Um, so, gear-wise... First, you're going to go into Boots of the Magi because they buffed that in the last patch. It's still cheap as fuck, and it gives you a nice movement bonus early in the game. I normally don't go with Boots first, but this guy, yes. Uh, Warlock Sash, second. It provides a nice health and mana buff for survivability, and then it gives you massive power as you build the stacks. Next is Rod of Tahiti. You're going to go into that. Just Again, you're building sheer magic power with this guy. You're just gonna. Your goal is to truck people into the dirt, into the dirt, and... Uh, that's what that's for. Next is kind of kind of iffy. It's gonna take me a little bit to explain it. You're gonna either go with the Rod of Tahiti, so uh, sorry, not the Rod of Tahiti, the uh, Obsidian Shard or the Spear of Magus. Now you're gonna go with the Obsidian Shard if they are stacking heavy magic protection because it's percentage based. So if it takes if they have a hundred magic protection and you take off fifty percent, it's gonna take away fifty. That's a lot. But if you if they're not if they have low magic protection if they have like twenty and you take away 50%, they're only, you're only taking away 10. So if they have low magic protection, you're gonna go with the Spear of Magus because that takes away a definite number. So say they only have 30 magic protection, you pick up the Spear of Magus, all their magic protection is gone as opposed to just half of it. So, you know, you gotta weigh both of them. The Spear of Magus also gives you health, so if you're having death issues, go with the Spear of Magus. The Obsidian Shard also gives you more magic power. I prefer the Obsidian Shard, but, you know, situation dictates. And then, Last but not least, Doom Orb, just for that more, just stacking more magic power. Later in the game, you're going to die a lot less. You'll get those stacks up. You have a full stack of Doom Orb on top of all that other gear. Nobody can hold a finger to you. You will burn everyone down. It doesn't matter who they are. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you guys like this guide, subscribe. I'm going to be putting out guides on every god as, you know, I'm going to try to do that as much as possible, as soon as possible, so you guys can turn to me for all your smite needs. Make sure you share with your friends. Thanks a lot, guys. Now you know how to play Anubis and kill Anubis. Peace.